a story time about the time that I went to the emergency brain hospital. I don't want to say the real word because they'll just shadow ban me. So you know what I mean. Uh, if you've ever been, I feel like you probably just know the stories that come out of it are incredible. They're insane and incredible. I honestly hadn't wanted to talk about this for a while, but then someone blackmailed me by saying like, I'm going to tell the whole world you were depressed. And I was like, I'll tell the whole world I was depressed. At the time, honestly, me and my mom were not doing really well. I was fighting with her every day and I had moved out and she wanted me to come back home. I really didn't want to come back home because we had a pretty tumultuous home life. Like me and her didn't get along when I was younger at all. Not at all. Like we got along. It's just hard to explain. If you're a mom and a daughter, you get it. You guys are probably like spell tumultuous, Emily. I'm like, I don't, I can't. Anyway, so one day I end up going back to my mom's house and I'm like fighting with her, fighting with her. I threw a fan at her like I was fucking Superman or something. Sorry, mom, for that. Love you very much. And then she was like pissing me off so bad. So I was sitting on the stairs. I was crying because I'm just pissed off. That's how my body reacts when I'm mad. I don't just like, I just cry. I don't know how to explain it. I get so pissed, I cry. I think I said something along the lines of like, I want to myself right now. Like it's sarcastically, ironically, shouldn't say it like that, but that's what I said. And my mother being the petty woman she was, was like, oh yeah, you're gonna go to the brain hospital for saying that. I'm just like, I was being ironic. Like I wasn't being serious, but she was obviously not gonna take that for an answer. She's just like, you're going to the brain hospital. When they come to get you, they honestly bring a lot of people. So I planned on just being like, no, my mom is overreacting. Like check my file. Like we're not getting along. This isn't the first rodeo baby. Um, and they're like, oh yeah, your mom and her friend said that you threatened to unalive yourself. I was like, Mm -hmm. which friend which friend they honestly literally treat you like garbage when they take you like they put me in handcuffs and then put me in the back of a cop car to take me to the hospital and i was like am i a criminal like is it illegal to hate your life i'm just confused a friend came up to the car and was like i'm so sorry emma like i didn't want to tell them that but your mom asked me to say something so you know i just want to i'm like i literally the window was rolled down that much i tried to spit in her face i won't lie and i'm sitting in this waiting room once i get to the hospital for like 13 hours and i end up eating chipotle with this girl on the floor and we become best friends there's this other kid running around who i guess was like a regular like he was there fr quite frequently literally the nurses said that the parents will check him in when they want to like go out of town basically how horrible is that that is the worst thing i've ever heard in my life like going around threatening to like people and they had to put him in his own room but before they put him in his own room he came up to me and was like you're new here i'm gonna you and i was like not before i do Anyways, the bestie that I met in there called her dad and asked him if he could bring me an extra blanket and some food because I didn't have any. And I'm not eating that dirty ass sandwich they give you. And he came and brought me food and a blanket. Like how sweet is that? Of telling the psychiatrist like that, I was never gonna actually do that. Like I know that I've tried to do that before, but like I'm not doing it now. And they let me go. And the friend that I met in there did end up taking her own life a few years later. And that day is coming up soon. So I've been thinking about her a lot and I've been missing her a lot. And yeah, RIP Celine. Growing up with a stepdad that was an addict was really weird. Weird and scary, but also I can look back at some things and laugh. So here's a few stories that I can look back at and laugh now. First and foremost, one time he had gotten clean and he had come home and had a car. And if you were an early 2000s kid, you know those cars that were shaped like straight up toasters? The ugliest cars on earth? That's what he had. Anyways, it was one of the very few times he actually had a car because he never was able to keep a car because obviously relapsing and stuff like that. Took me to a exchange of goods a pretty bad street that was really well known for being bad when we got there he walked in and he told me to stay in the car with my little sister he was in there for like 20 minutes and she starts crying and i'm like oh my god i have to change her diaper what the hell where is this guy so i literally get her in the back and i start changing her diaper all of the sudden he starts sprinting out towards the car and i look over and i see the other guy with literally a pew 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 and he's like get back in the car get back in the car and we race off race off i get the baby buckled in so fast i get buckled in i'm literally like 11 to pay some people that he owed money to he didn't have all the money basically he tells me not to tell my mom well i tell my mom i'm a mommy's girl and i really didn't like the situation he put me and my little sister in and it's really crazy because my mom says she doesn't even remember this happening meanwhile she literally broke up with him because of this but they broke up and got back together so much that it just was like probably that one was wiped anyways the people that he owed money to they see my mom driving home from work one day and they see the van that she's driving and recognize it as his they did in fact pew pew out the windows and like we were kind of poor so we didn't have the money to fix those windows right away so we drove around with that car having taped over windows for weeks also one time had the cops coming for him because obviously things were going on and we lived in townhouses that were connected to each other so he literally jumps up into the ceiling and starts crawling through the ceiling and then slams out of the ceiling onto the ground and the cops are there like what just happened what was that about last time he ever got cleaned he took me to where he was living underneath a bridge in our area and he was just living eating and sleeping underneath that bridge this is a photo of where he was living under the bridge i'm covering my mom's ass the reality of having someone you care about very deeply being an addict is that you feel very conflicting feelings i loved him deeply because i knew him well 
but I also hated him a lot. I caused so much pain and turmoil in my family and was always in and out of my life, confusing the fuck out of me as a kid. I wanna remind you guys, if any of you are dealing with loving someone who has the disease of addiction, the person that they become when they're using or relapsing is not them and you know that. It's okay to love them and also hate them sometimes, that's normal. Timmy actually passed away in October due to his addiction, this is Timmy. In fact, my mom had actually ripped up this picture when I was little because they had broken up and I took it out of the trash and taped it up because I knew I'd want it someday. And here I am wanting it someday, so. I love you guys so much, bye. My husband, 33 male, told me he's no longer attracted to me, 27 female. I'm currently pregnant with twins. I don't know what to do if there's anything I can do. This is basically my last resort before considering divorce. We have been together seven years and married for three. This is my very first planned, very on purpose pregnancy. I've never been with anyone besides my husband. He was my first kiss and everything else. He on the other hand, not so much. I have a pretty high sex drive and so does he. So going two to five times a day, if we have time, is pretty normal for us. After I hit around the 12 week mark of my pregnancy, he stopped initiating sex or responding to my sexual advances. It hurt, but he said he was stressed due to things at work. So I stopped making any sexual comments for a few weeks because I didn't want to add any extra pressure to his life. A few weeks passed and I mentioned that this is the longest we've gone without sex, just trying to see where his mind is at. And he said, why does it matter? Are you cheating on me? Which took me for a loop. I don't take cheating accusations lightly and feel like if you say that, you should be ready to stand on it. It's insulting to my character, demeaning and honestly downright disgusting. I told him those and how it made me feel and he just got quiet. I told him I would never cheat. I'm not pathetic enough to do that. If I wasn't happy with him, I would just leave him. I have every ability to do so. He got emotional and said he was stressed out about money and some petty debt around 5k. So after we finished talking, I was thinking of a way to help him be less stressed so I sent him 7,500 from my savings. I've been working full time for over 10 and something years at this point and started investing a few years ago so my savings account is comfortable. I told him I sent it to him and he asked why and I said, the debts. And he said, what debts? I just stared at him and was like, um, the ones you just cried in my lap about? He says something like, oh yeah, sorry. I'm just so off today and goes to sit on the couch. The whole thing felt so weird. So I went out and asked him details about the debt. After 20 minutes of back and forth, he finally admitted he isn't stressed about debt and isn't having any money problems. He just isn't attracted to me anymore. I asked him what about me has changed since the last time he was attracted to me because I'm pretty sensitive about my body image and my entire life I have never shared these insecurities with anyone, not even him. It's something I always kept to myself, but even with my current body, I honestly don't think I look that bad. So far, I've gained only 25 to 30 pounds and I'm still working out and working full time. So now I'm almost bad because I didn't get fucking pregnant on my own and last time I checked, I wasn't the one begging for a kid for the past two years. I'm giving him two and now he's saying I'm ugly because of my belly? Pregnancy hormones and whatnot, I started crying a little but wiping them away as fast as I could because I was more mad than sad. He said it's not me, it's a pregnancy and he's concerned about the long-term effects to my body after seeing videos of postpartum bodies and c-section scars then told me it wasn't fair that i was upset because he's having a natural male reaction and i'm manipulating his feelings he's never said anything like this before either i asked him to explain what a natural male reaction is and he said what makes a guy hard and what makes a guy not hard i asked him to go stay with a friend for a night or two so i can have some space and he's staying at his sister's who called me and asked what happened because we never really fight i don't know what to do really i'm exhausted from everything already and and this on top of it is just making me feel even worse. I have been crying all day and don't have anyone to really talk to this about. So any advice would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, she does have an update. He has already sent the money back and it's showing pending in my account already. I have looked through his laptop that is synced with his phone, our home office, and our financial statements. Unless he picked up an additional job to hide an affair, it would be hard for him to hide since his check direct deposits into my bank account and I control the household finances. I am much better with money than he is and both of my parents were accountants and I distribute the money. What he gets for fun money is not enough to hide an affair in my opinion, but I've already went through everything. I would usually not be willing to do this, but I'm almost at my third trimester and need answers now and not later. He has sent flowers and pregnancy craving foods and notes saying that he loves me and he's sorry, but that's all they say. Not sorry for lying to you for weeks, if not months. Just, I love you always. I'm sorry. Please call me. My sister kept texting me and then she had the nerve to ask if I cheated on him too, so I told her what happened and what he said. She told me she chewed him out and told his parents too. His mom called this morning and said that no matter what, she and her daughter, my sister-in-law, are here for me, and so that helps, I guess. They know my parents both have passed away and I'm not very close to the rest of my family. I haven't bit the bullet and told any of my friends yet because once I tell them, it becomes a little too real and too embarrassing.